Hi, I'm Glenn Engel, the developer of Crew Timer Regatta Timing. In this video, I will give you a brief overview of using the Crew Timer mobile app for timing your regatta. I will also assume that your regatta has been configured via the admin web interface and credentials have been entered into the tablet for your regatta. When starting Crew Timer Mobile, you will first be asked to confirm your waypoint location. If you make a mistake and choose the wrong waypoint, press and hold the waypoint annotation and select the correct waypoint. Once you've confirmed your waypoint selection, you'll see the screen partitioned into three sections. The top section shows recorded time events. The middle add split button records time events, and the bottom section shows all the events and valve numbers associated with the regatta and is used to associate valve numbers to times. Let's begin by recording the time for bow 1 as it crosses the start line. As the line judge calls Mark, we will press Add Split. Mark! Notice that a time has been recorded in the upper section with an unassigned bow number which is marked as a question mark. We can now complete the timing for bow 1 by simply pressing the number 1 button in the bottom section. Let's try that again with two shells crossing in close proximity. Mark. 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 Notice that we have three unassigned times for about two, three, and four respectively. The unassigned times are shown with a violet background. This serves as an indicator that bow numbers need to be assigned. In this case, we see three unassigned times, which correspond to bows two, three, and four respectively. As we move through the demo, you'll notice the background color of the timestamp initially shows up as yellow and changes to blue. The yellow color indicates that the time has been stored locally on the tablet and is pending transmission to the cloud. When the background is blue, the time is also stored in the cloud. As we press bow buttons, the bow number will be assigned to the first unassigned timestamp in the upper section. I'll now press bow 2 followed by bow 3 followed by bow 4. You note as the bow numbers are assigned, they are grayed out, making it easy to see which shells have times and which are still in need of times. If we take a look at the Crew Timer website, we'll see that these entries are immediately marked as in progress. This indication shows up immediately upon recording a start time. This should seem pretty easy, and in fact it is. However, in the heat of a race, with close finishes, it's easy to forget which bow number crossed first and which was second. In a five-shell mashup, it's quite easy to record times for each call of mark, but remembering bow order may become a challenge. This is where the job of recorder shines. Let's spend a minute showing how the Crew Timer Bow Order Worksheet can be used to help with this problem. First, let's switch to recording finish times. I'll press and hold Start, select Finish, and now I'm ready to enter finish times. The purpose of the worksheet is to record bow numbers as shells approach the line and record finish order for later entry into the crew timer tablet. Times are not needed on this sheet, only bow numbers. Seven approaching, followed by eight. Mark. Bow 10 is after bow 8. Mark. Mark. The next ones are close. 12 on the inside, 11 on the outside. Mark. Mark. Outside, then inside. With Crew Timer, there is not a rush to enter bound numbers, and you can relax a bit as you transcribe times from the worksheet to the tablet. We have three boats approaching, nine on the inside, 16 on the outside, with 14 in the middle. Looks like it will be outside, middle, inside. 
Mark. 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 Since the order was established as outside, middle, inside by the spotter, the finish order is recorded and transcribed to the tablet. Transcription speed is not required. Here we record the times on the tablet. Now that you've seen how CrewTimer Mobile works with the Bowder worksheet, let's look at situations that may be out of the ordinary. Let's pretend you accidentally press the wrong bow number, say 17 instead of 18. This will be obvious when you either compare the finish order to the worksheet, bow 17 shows up and a time has been assigned, or you immediately know you hit the wrong button. Let's see how that is handled by recording a time for bow 17 and correcting it to bow 18. Add split. Accidentally enter bow 17. To correct the time, simply press the erroneous bow number in the upper section. Enter the correct number in the entry box and press OK. You may have noticed the question mark bow number button. This is used to assign a time to an unknown bow number. For example, a shell crosses the finish without a bow number. You can assign the time to an event with a question mark button and later correct the bow number in the same manner we use for bow 18. You'll also notice the official times button. This button shows up when you're recording finish times or referee times and is used to declare the race official. It changes the marking on the website from provisional to official for each race marked. Another potential error is adding too many split times. This also is easily handled. Let's try that. To remove an entry, click on the red X and confirm the delete operation. Notice that the timestamp entry is now marked with a strike through font and a gray background. If you want to restore the deleted item, just click the red X again and confirm. The remaining part of this video, I'll show you how to assign penalties and mark races official. To assess a penalty, press and hold the bow number to which you wish to assign a penalty. Select the penalty from the list and confirm with OK. To assess a penalty, I will now press and hold bow 10. Then I will select the missing bow from the drop down box. I'll click OK to confirm. And now bow 10 has a 60 second penalty. If the penalty is not in the list, select custom and enter a keyword and time to designate the penalty. Here I will designate one as interference with a penalty of 36 seconds. The default list of penalties is configured in the CrewTimer Cloud interface when configuring a regatta. Most regattas will have penalties called into a central location where the penalties are entered. Before I conclude this video, I'd like to introduce you to the CrewTimer button. The CrewTimer button plugs into the headphone jack of phones and tablets to allow creation of timing events at the press of a button. This allows the person calling the start or finish to push the button to record a timestamp without looking at the tablet. The right angle connector prevents accidental unplugging of the cord from the tablet. When used by the referee, the split times are automatically recorded when they call mark and are as accurate as you can get without an expensive video capture system. Let's see it in action. Here's the button, and I'll take the cable and plug it into the earphone jack at the top of the tablet. And once it's plugged in, it's pretty much ready to go. All I need to do is push the button. There we go. We got a time event. Click, 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 and we have three more time events. You can also press it quickly when needed. Mark, mark. You can get more information about the CrewTimer button at the CrewTimer store at admin.crewtimer.com slash store. Thanks for watching this video. You should now be well prepared to successfully time your regatta. The demo here focused on head races, but CrewTimer works equally well for sprint races.
The only difference is that when a bow number is pressed for an event, all boats are marked as started. Finish times are recorded as demonstrated here. For more information, go to admin.crewtimer.com slash help. Thanks for watching this video. Good luck with your regatta.